Senator Coons. Thank you, Chairman Grassley. Uh, if I could just follow up on a point the chairman was just making. Uh, violent crime is a concern for many of us, as you spoke about in your opening statement, Mr. Attorney General. Uh, fighting violent crime and the steady increase in violent crime in our country is one of your top priorities. I, too, am eager to hear the recommendations of your violent crime task force. My hometown uh, of Wilmington, Delaware, is seeing not just a surge, but a record high level of shootings and homicides. And while our local law enforcement is doing everything they can, um, I would welcome the chance to work with you on uh, deploying more federal resources uh, for what I think is a pressing issue for our entire country. Thank you. We can provide leadership. Uh, we have um, uh, completed our review of the crime problem in America and how best to address it. Uh, the professionals have impressed me dramatically uh, with a updated Project Safe Neighborhoods policy that focuses on the key areas where crime rate is high. This whole idea that uh, you shouldn't see where the crimes are occurring and investigate those crimes there is a mistaken thing. New York and other jurisdictions have proven, yep. proven that if you do this systematically, you can reduce crime and make communities safer. And Everybody in the country needs to be. So we're going to do that on a, a localized basis, encouraging our U.S. attorneys to take the lead with federal and state. And I think, and we have statistics that prove those policies have worked. Crime has actually dropped where they've been implemented. I'm confident. I don't want to be overconfident. I don't know how strong this rise in crime is, but I think we can make a difference, and I'm determined to do so. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. We are deploying a similar uh, strategy in Delaware that is making uh, some progress, but the combination of the opioid crisis, uh, the easy availability of guns, uh, and some other factors is making it particularly tough in our community, and I'd welcome partnering with you on that. Um, in your confirmation hearing, um, you, you stated that a special priority for you would be uh, the aggressive enforcement of laws to ensure access to the ballot for every eligible voter. Um, but earlier this year, after six years of litigation, the department dropped its claim. Uh, the Texas legislature uh, passed a voter ID law with the intent to discriminate. Only weeks later, the court found that claim had merit. Shouldn't the Department of Justice continue to pursue discrimination claims when supported by the evidence? Yes, it should pursue that when supported by the evidence. Um, let me say this about voter ID. The Supreme Court has, uh, has upheld voter ID policies if properly conducted. Texas passed a voter ID law. The court found it defective and struck it down. Uh, an election was coming up immediately. The court approved of, uh, a new version, a modified version of the voter ID law. Uh, Texas legislature passed that court approved modified version and we withdrew our opposition to it. We think that was the right and proper thing and not really, uh, I, I will say the Department of Justice was still in the case, so in a way we reversed it, but I would say also the Department of Justice won the battle and got the uh, law improved. Well, my, my broader concern would be to hear from you how many cases the administration has brought to enforce access to the ballot box and following on the questioning previously, how many cases you're bringing to prosecute discrimination against the LGBT community. Um, I respect and appreciate your answer about defending against hate crimes, but one of the core challenges is to actually go out and uh, prosecute against cases of active discrimination. If you'd help me with some update on what's being done by the department to be an effective advocate in prosecuting cases um, of denial of access to the ballot box and of discrimination against the LGBT community, I'd appreciate it. We're open for business. Anybody that's denying someone the right to vote or blocking their right to vote uh, is in violation of constitutional rights and federal law, and we are uh, have a voting rights section that's quite willing to defend that. And your other was L LGBT rights. Um, we're going to protect um, our LGBT citizens uh, with vigor and determination, and we are not going to look the other way. We will enforce the law as written, and we will continue to do so.
Uh, we have acted. I, I got a letter from some congressmen listing about seven cases that they were concerned about. I made sure that every one of them was looked at to see if maybe there was one unified person or group threatening those. Number two, to see if there was some sort of pattern uh, in them and if anything more could be done to prosecute them. And I know at least one case um, they found some new evidence and maybe we, we'll go forward with that. Thank you. Thank so, you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, 